Break out your tablets, let's sculpt. With a clay brush, rough in the mouth and the cheeks. Sub the brush, dig in the holes for the nose. Front teeth will be small. Crease tool to sharpen the nose. Mask will be happy and sad at the same time. Move the anchor point and tilt the jaw. The masking tool is your friend. Use that all the time on all your projects. The areas not darkened will be affected by your brush. Lips are juicy. Mask, then extract the horns. Use drag, inflate, and crease for sharpness. We're halfway there. It's a good time to mask the whole face. Unmask the holes that we want. For thickness, extract by negative 0.1. I forgot to cut the holes out for the nose. We'll do that now. Pull the lips over the fangs. The mask is dissected into two pieces. I like big things, but this is too big. It will be printed in two parts. Since we're using resin, it will be heavy, so I need more holes for the straps. Rectangle to bully in the hole. It's almost done. Let's punch up the details on this a little bit and give it some character. To have it click together, let's try to add some pegs to it. Pegging is also a verb. Always sign your work. Export both parts separately as STL files. My masks are 180 millimeters wide on the X and I scale it just so. I use automatic supports in Lychee Slicer and this will take 10 hours of print. I'm using a prototype resin that's not on, on the market yet. I'll be doing a review of their final product in the future. I'm using this Anycubic Photon Mono X2 to print the bottom half of the mask. This is my workhorse, it's a 4K resin printer. The other part printed on the M3 Premium. This printer can print at double the resolution. In about 10 hours, the whole print is done. Unscrew and remove the build plate. There is uncured resin left on the surface of the model. For 4 minutes, it goes into a bath of 99% isopropyl alcohol. Main filter and two small filters help me clear the air of all the fumes. Instead of adding more alcohol, I'll just use a spray and the brush to clean the plate. Remove it from the bath to let air dry. The best part is hearing the crackling of all the supports coming off. A heat gun is usually applied to the supports, but this time I didn't need it. The supports came off pretty easily. Use an X-Acto blade to snap off the little nibbies left from the supports. Notice that I'm still wearing gloves. The model is still not fully safe yet. There may be some uncured resin left on the surface. I cure it for about an extra 20 minutes. The resin will become fully hardened and inert. The top half of the mask looks amazing. The pegs on the bottom, however, did not make it because I did not add supports to them. When I was first 3D printing, I was making a lot of mistakes and blaming it on the resin. The hard truth was, it's never ever the resin. It's your settings. So that's why I make long videos on my YouTube channel on how to slice. I've made over 100 videos on how to process a 3D print. I'm going to show you how to put these two halves together now that we have them both printed. JB Welds is a lifesaver. Cover your table in an oversized silicone mat. The epoxy comes in two parts. When these two syrups mix together, they will quickly bond together and harden. This is a silicone mixing cup. Nothing sticks in it. I let it sit for a minute and when it starts to thicken, I'll apply it to the edge of the mask. I would say you have about a good five minutes of working time with this. At the three minute mark, it starts to become a little tacky. When this epoxy hardens, it becomes almost like plastic. When joining the two halves together, I go slow. I hold it together in place for 3 minutes. Once it starts to hold on its own, I use painter's tape to kind of keep it in the same spot. Lately, I've been using clear jewelry resin. This clear syrup will seep into all the little cracks that I missed with the epoxy. Next, I blast it with ultraviolet light. I don't attempt this with the epoxy because it will ruin my brush. I can just wash my brush with isopropyl alcohol and it'll be good as new. 3D printing resin takes about 30 seconds to harden. This jewelry resin hardens much faster. The bigger gaps are at the edges. Everything is happening microscopically so I have to trust the process and repeat it three times. The epoxy is setting, the resin is setting, everything is getting hard at the same time. Painter's tape is removed, let's fill in the cracks in the front. I wasn't painting over this, I wouldn't use this jewelry resin for anything else. It yellows faster than my eyes experiencing jaundice. All the major gaps are now filled in and fully hardened. The same resin I use to print the mask, I pour some into a cup. This resin is more watery, so it seeps in further to any microscopic cracks that I didn't catch the first time. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, make sure you're wearing your UV protectors. You will get an instant headache if you stare at this light. By painting on the resin, you can say that I'm manually 3D printing. Imagine painting over 7,000 layers. The sunlight will finish curing it. This primer sticks great to resin 3D printed objects. I got this Iwata Eclipse airbrushing kit from Amazon. This is my first airbrush system. So so there's definitely a learning curve with this, so mad props to anybody who airbrushes anything. With the mask painted, I can see all the imperfections much easier. This is Filler Sandable Primer. It's awesome. I don't like some of the cracks that I didn't get with the resin, so I fill it in with Tamiya Putty. Once it touches the air out of the tube, it becomes a putty and I fill in some of the cracks. I held the can further and sprayed it extra to give it texture. If you say baggy, I'm thinking of a baggy of sandpaper. <laughs> I work it with the 400 grit sandpaper, which is rough. You might even sand down to the bottom layers. Then I give it a wash with soap and warm water. After spraying with a little bit of primer, I go with the finer grit. For the hard to reach areas, I use a file. And then I give it one last coat of primer. I have so much fun creating these masks and I hope you do as well designing 3D objects on your tablet. Follow for more sculpts.